Cheers, Miki e More! In this video, I am so excited to show you how to sew this beautifully elegant chiffon maxi gown. Originally inspired by a Dior dress that I just fell in love with, this dress has an exquisite mandarin collar, beautiful bishop sleeves with cuffs, a front placket closure with optional buttons, and an effortlessly elegant maxi circle skirt that looks absolutely ethereal because of the flowy chiffon. So without further ado, let's get started sewing this dress using my new Audrey sewing pattern, which you can get at the link below this video. Here are the materials that you'll need. The first dress I made was using a pattern chiffon, and I loved how it turned out, so I'm making a second one with this lilac grey chiffon. It has such a beautiful flow and drape, so it's perfect for this elegant dress. I recommend a light to medium weight fabric for this dress, such as cotton lawn, crepe, viscose, rayon, or silk. Now I'll cut out the pattern pieces from my fabric and make sure to transfer the marks to make it easier to sew in the process. And there are detailed instructions on exactly how to do this in your pattern booklet. After I cut out all of the pattern pieces, I like to cut the bias strips from the leftover fabric. I can use this later for things like ties or seam finishing. Okay, let's get to sewing. We'll start the process by applying interfacing to the center front and the front closure. Then apply interfacing to the one piece of the collar here and apply interfacing to half of the cuff as well. Applying interfacing gives us some extra strength to the fabric and helps it keep its beautiful shape. Now pin the bust darts. Transfer the bust dart marks to the other side and pin both darts. And so, Make sure that the point of the dart is sewn about 1 cm or half an inch from the edge, as this will help us avoid pointy darts and make it follow the natural shape of the bust. First press your dart seam simply and then press the darts towards the waist or towards your armhole, whatever you prefer. To make the placket, fold the seam allowance of the center front to the wrong side and press. Then fold again about 2.5 cm or 1 inch at the notches, pin and press. Stitch right near the edge. Then press the center front and the placket for the closure. Use a wooden tailor's clapper here to cool your seam. And we're going to trim away the excess fabric at the neckline, evening out the shape. Now place the back and front right sides together and pin the shoulder seams. Sew and then press your shoulder seams. Here press them towards the back. Now that we're done with our shoulder seams, we'll move on to the collar. Mark the center back of the bodice and mark the centers of the collared pieces. Then pin the collar into the neckline, right sides together, matching up at the centers. Then pin matching the shoulder seam with the marks on the collar and the pocket marks. And the seam allowances on the collar should stick out a bit from both ends like this. Sew the collar to the neckline. Start at the one edge of the pocket and sew to the other edge. Then trim the seam allowances, leaving about 4mm. Clip the seam allowances at the curve of the neckline. Now press the seam allowances of the neckline towards the collar. Take the other piece of the collar and on the right side, mark the bottom edge of the seam allowance. Flip that piece wrong side up and then fold the seam allowances to that wrong side using your marked line as a guide and press the seam allowance. Pin the outer edge of the collar right sides together, matching up all the marks. What I like to do here to make sure that both ends of my collar are symmetrical and evenly round is I take the collar pattern piece and trim the seam allowances at the curved part of the collar. 
Then I mark the seam line using this template on both ends of the collar. Now we'll sew the outer edge of the collar following the marked line on the curves. When I sew, I carefully unfold the pressed seam allowances on the edge of the collar sides. Trim the seam allowances, leaving about 3 to 4 millimeters. Then turn the collar right side out and pin the outer edge of the collar. And nicely fold the seam allowance at the corner edge of your collar. Pin around the bottom edge, covering the previous seam by 1mm. And of course you can sew the bottom edge of the collar by hand to have a clean finished look. I'll top stitch the collar here from the right side about 1mm or a sixteenth of an inch from the seam edge. Here's how it looks like on the inside. And press the collar and use a wooden clapper to cool the fabric down. Now for the bodice of the dress, pin the side seams. Then sew and press the side seams towards the back. Pin the placket right side over the left. Make it secure by stitching at the bottom of the placket at the waistline. And this is how it should look like. On our sleeves, I would first recommend marking around the opening before cutting the slit, but since my opening is already cut, I'll work with it. Mark the guiding lines on the sleeve opening about 5mm from both edges of the opening to the point, and then cut the opening. Mark 5mm on the bias. Sew the sleeve opening to the bias right sides together. Sew from the sleeve side. The mark line should match up with the 5mm mark on the bias. The seam allowances at the opening point are 1mm here. Press the seam allowances towards the bias. And fold the other seam of the bias twice and pin just covering the previous seam. Press. You can base stitch by hand about 1 to 2 millimeters from the edge. Then sew the machine close to the edge. Trim the bottom excess of the bias. Take both ends together and find the middle and sew the bias here at the middle angle. At the wider side of the sleeve, fold the opening leg or piece towards the wrong side and stitch it in place. Press the sleeve opening. Moving on to the cuffs, pin the side seam of the sleeve, making sure you have two symmetrical sleeves here. So, then press the seam allowances. Fold the seam allowance of one side of the cuff to the wrong side and press. You can draw a guideline for yourself for even seam allowances. Then place a gathering stitch at the bottom of the sleeve. Mark the center of the sleeve and the cuff, and then pin the unfolded edge of the cuff to the sleeve right sides together. Leave the seam allowances of the cuff at the bottom edge. Match the center marks and gather the sleeve to fit the length of the cuff. Sew the cuff to the sleeve and press your seam allowances. Press the seam allowances to flatten the gathering here. Then press the seam allowances towards the cuff. Hold the cuff in half, right sides together, and pin the short edges.
then sew the cuff edge. The seam should be close to the sleeve opening edge. For the hem of the cuffs, we want to flip the cuff to the right side and make sure that the corner here is neat. Then pin the folded edge of the cuff to the previous seam, covering it by about 1mm or 16th of an inch. And take out the gathering stitch. Press the cuff. I used glass head pins here so I don't have to worry about pressing over them. Baste it if needed and top stitch the cuff from the right side close to the edge. You can also top stitch around the whole cuff like I did here. And here are our pretty finished cuffs. Don't forget to press the cuff and cool it down with a clapper. After this, we're going to set in our sleeves. Place the gathering seam at the top of the sleeve, the seam length being about 4 millimeters. Place the right sleeve into the right armhole and pin the sleeve into the armhole matching up the side seam, center mark, with the shoulder seam and back notches. Evenly distribute the gathering and pin. Sew the armhole seam. And serge the armhole seam. Then press. Press the seam allowances towards the sleeve. Now for a skirt, pin the side seams. Sew and serge the side seams. And now press. Mark the center front and the back on the skirt and then mark the center on the bodice front and the back. Pin the waistline, placing the bodice inside the skirt right sides together, making sure to match up the side seams and the center marks. And sew your waistline. And press your waistline seam. And then press the seam allowances towards the skirt. Before we hem the dress, we want to make sure that the edge of the skirt is even. So find the highest point of the edge of your skirt and then orient yourself on that point. Mark that length all around the skirt and then we can cut along that line to even out our skirt edge. And for the hem, use a rolled or a narrow serger seam to finish up. You can also use a baby hem. And press. Now for our closures, mark the placement of the buttonholes using the paper pattern for this, or orient yourself with the size of your buttons. For the sleeve opening, the buttonholes are placed on the folded edge. If you're making a button closure at the placket, at the center front, mark the placement of your buttonholes here as well. First, mark at the bust line, then make the second mark about 1 cm or 3 quarters of an inch down from the collar. Then mark the others with an equal distance between them. Another option for the bodice is to make a few secure stitches from the bust down. Here I made two stitches. And this way you can go without a front closure. Sew the buttonholes using the right machine settings for your buttons. Cut the holes for the buttons using a seam ripper. And sew your buttons on. We'll finish off the dress with a thin tie to cinch in the waist. Fold your strip of fabric right sides together and sew in the middle of the strip about 4-6 to six millimeters from the edge. Trim the seam allowance and turn it out using a loop turner. Then press. Give your garment a finishing press like always, and we are done with our ethereal Audrey dress. Thank 
you so much for watching. I hope this inspires you to sew a dress yourself. I know you love it. You can get the PDF downloadable sewing pattern that I used at the link in the description of this video. And happy sewing!